In this video, we're going to talk about header tags, H1, H2, H3, etc., and how to use them for SEO. Welcome to All-in-One SEO. We make SEO easy with our powerful WordPress SEO plugin. Let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about header tags, also known as HTML header tags, commonly known in the web design world as those H1, H2, H3, etc. tags that you see. We're going to talk about what they are and how to use them for SEO. So to demonstrate some header tags, I'm on the AIO SEO blog here. So this is the title of the page, everything you need to know about header tags and how to use them for SEO. So typically in the code of the content, this would get an H1. This would be a H1 header tag. You usually only use the H1 tag for the title of your page or post or the main thing that this page is about. So on this page, for example, we only have one H1 header tag in this page. If you want to be sure that this is a header tag, if you're in Google Chrome and you right click and, and select inspect, you can see the code behind this page. You can see that there is actually, in fact, an H1 tag here. By the way, if you don't do any coding whatsoever, if you learn this one trick, you can really impress all of your friends. They will think you are a computer genius. So header tags aren't just used visually as headers. They're also used as SEO. But if we scroll on down the page, they're pretty easy to spot because they are used visually as headers to separate the sections of your content. So this right here where it says, what are header tags? That is a header tag. This is a header tag. This is a header tag as well. This is a header tag. And header tags come in a hierarchy, H1 through H6. So in this page, for example, this is definitely an H1. This is probably an H2 header tag, and this is probably an H3 header tag. These may or may not be H4s. They may just be bolded paragraph text. This is probably another H2, and this is probably another H3. You may have a page where you don't use H4, H5, and H6. You only use H1, H2, H3. You may have a page where you only use H1 and H2. It all depends on your content and how much you want to divide it up. But dividing it up like this is very good for web content because it makes it much more skimmable and much more easy to read than big blocks of huge paragraphs. So header tags are not just valuable from an SEO standpoint, but they're also valuable to make your page more readable and therefore they're very good from a usability standpoint. So one thing you can do with header tags that is incredibly useful for your SEO endeavors is to make sure that your focus SEO key phrase or keywords appears in your header tags. So if I head on over to my demo site here, I'm on the dashboard and I'm going to go over to the post section just so I can pull up a sample post to show you this in action. I'm going to pull up this post called configuring the schema settings in all-in-one SEO. And then if you have our awesome plugin installed all-in-one SEO, You'll see a little section on the right here that says AIO SEO. And if you scroll down to the focus key phrase section, yours might be collapsed. Mine is open right now. I'll collapse that to show you what it would look like. So if the little arrow is going out to the right, click on that little arrow to open it up. And you can see my focus key phrases here. It says schema settings. It's telling me the focus key phrase is found in the SEO title. That's great. It's not in the meta description, so I need to fix that. The length is good. It's in the URL. It's not in the introduction. And then this is the section I wanted to focus on. Our plugin is telling you your focus key phrase is not in the subheadings or not in the subheadings enough. And it's telling me to use more focus key phrases in your H2 and H3 subheadings. So that's how important this is that we even have a section within our SEO plugin to remind you to use your focus key phrase in your headings. So on this page, for example, the focus key phrase is. Schema settings. The title of the page is configuring the schema settings in all-in-one SEO. This is also an H1. So it is schema settings. That phrase is appearing there in the H1. If I scroll down the page to one of the headings. Okay, so here's schema settings here. It is in, in this H3 tag. So maybe in this section here that says person or organization, we can find a way to elegantly fit in the phrase schema settings. So I'm just going to say, schema settings, colon, person, or organization, because that's what this section of my page is about. And now we can see over on the right-hand side that focus key phrase in subheadings is showing up green. So this 
focus key phrase schema settings was in one of the other subheadings further down the page. I know I saw it somewhere. Yeah, right here. But that was the only subheading that it was in in the entire page. So to let Google know that this page is about schema settings, we wanted to find a way to elegantly include it in one of our other subheadings. I don't just want to include the focus key phrase where it doesn't make sense, but this person or organization setting that we're talking about is part of the schema setting. So in this case, it does make sense. I just had to be a little more mindful of how I wrote that header. I'm back on the AIO SEO blog now, and we're looking at the companion post to this video entitled Everything You Need to Know About Header Tags and How to Use Them for SEO. If someone was searching for this page, what would they be searching for? Maybe they came here searching for what are header tags. So right away in the title slash H1 of this page, we have that key phrase header tags. And then the very next thing we have is what are header tags. So if they had searched for that, in this case, that exactly matches their search query. So this is going to line up high as far as a match for search intent. So if you were searching for what are header tags, this is definitely a high quality page that if you landed on, would satisfy your search intent. So those are some of the main ways to use header tags to improve the SEO of your pages or posts. If you want to read more on this, I'll include a link in the description to this companion blog post to this video. But right now I want to show you how to actually implement header tags in your content. So there are a couple different ways to add header tags to your content. Uh, the first way is just to start a new block and choose heading. And then if you hover over it, you get an option where it says H2. I can click on that and decide which header or subheader I want to use. So in this case, I think I'm going to use H3. And then the other thing you can do is take an existing block like this one right here and click on where it says paragraph and change that to a heading. So I'll make this one an H4. If you were writing your WordPress post in a word processor like Microsoft Word or something, and then copying it into WordPress afterwards, you'd probably use that second option quite often. Just adding the formatting and changing the size does not make this a header. It's just a bold paragraph, and it does not carry the same SEO weight that proper headers and subheaders have. So that's how to use header tags for SEO. If you click on this next video right here, we'll show you how to use All-in-One SEO's Link Assistant to speed up your internal linking workflow. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and tricks on how to use our easy and powerful WordPress SEO plugin, All-in-One SEO.